Congress report about um, the various research that Methuselah Foundation is, is um, working on or would like to be working on soon. Okay. Um, there was also a demo room, which a lot of these conferences and convergence style um, events, they, you often hear in the audience, all this talk is great, but what can I touch? What can I see? What, what, what's going on here? What, what can I actually get involved in? Yeah. And so at Build, there was really a nice room where you could go in and see demonstrations of, of um, a little bit of augmented reality and some robotics and, and a few other things. Nice. So yeah, yes. that's something new then, right? Uh, it, uh, again, uh, Aubrey, he mentioned where they're at on certain research projects, like Lysosense. Uh, yes, he, okay. he talked about how there was funding and actual research going on in Lysosense and um, um, a couple of other, the seven deadly sins, but there are still some um, of those uh, research topics that he wants to explore that did not have funding or have not had any researchers jumping into it yet. And, um, and he mentioned what their progress is, that they're talking to researchers, that they're, they're, um, they're, they're going to eventually have a nice portfolio of research going on. All right, great. I just want to mention uh, to everyone again that's in the chat, in case you do have some questions for Richard here, uh, please go ahead and ask them uh, over the next few minutes. Um, because, you know, I have my own questions here, uh, for Richard, but I'm sure that some of you have some, uh, you're wondering about a few things as well. And I, again, I want to mention Richard, the former, uh, former director and treasurer of the Immortality Institute and now executive director of the World Transhumanist Association, which is going to be Humanity Plus. What's the uh, main thing that you've learned uh, since becoming executive director of <laughs> Humanity Plus? What, what's the what's the thing that uh, people perhaps on the outside don't know about Humanity Plus when you became executive director? You're like, oh, this is how it all works. Uh, is there anything uh, interesting that occurred to you as you took on the role? Well, 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 every time you, you bring some passionate people together to work in leadership roles, um, an executive director and a board, for example, um, there can sometimes be a little bit of contention between different views. And so, so it has been an interesting, um, an interesting experience on that regard. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I have a little bit of, uh, you know, experience in that as well, you know, uh, with, uh, you know, trying to get things done and having a lot of different opinions and such things uh, uh, with uh, working with a board. And, and the World Transhumanist Association has, or Humanity Plus, has a pretty big board, doesn't it? I think I was looking through. Yeah, it has 10 members 10 on the board. 10 members on the board, okay. Yeah, I imagine so that... So we're doing a lot of interesting things. Um, we're exploring our relationships. We're, we're discussing the internal processes and procedures of, of, the, um, the, of the business, of the organization. And um, we'll be setting goals for the, the year and then for, for longer periods of time. Um, so it's also a mostly new board, and, I, and I'm a new executive director. So, you know, we, we, we've jumped in and try to learn all that we can and try to do things as quickly but as uh, efficiently and well as possible. Okay. Uh, and I, when I noticed I was looking around uh, for some graphics uh, before the show, and I noticed you're listed as on the advisory board uh, for uh, Lifeboat Foundation. Are you still on the advisory board? I am. Okay. Um, I, I'm not too involved with what's going on. Um, oh, okay. There, there are a lot of boards, there are a lot of members, and, um, y you know, it's, it's getting projects started and, and such sure. may take a little time. May take a little time, right. Uh, one thing uh, I want to mention, too, is promote your Frontier channel, uh, where you blog, and I believe you have a radio uh, or a podcast as well? Is well, I did. Oh, you did. I, I did. Okay. That was back in 2005, and oh. I did a few episodes, and um, I, I was never quite satisfied with it. I mean, I didn't have the array of equipment that you currently have, and I always wanted to jump into video, but that seemed like too big of a leap for me to take. So sure. someday I'd like to revisit it, but, you know, there's a lot of other things going on now. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I just wanted to promote that uh, you do have that Frontier channel with some great content from years past, uh, and... Uh, 
you know, latest, uh, you know, one, the writings that you've had on there. Very good. Uh, so I want to let people know. Frontier Channel, Richard Lease, uh, a lot of great contact th there. I'm just going to scan the text uh, chat here to see if any questions have popped up while we've been talking here. Um, and uh, someone had been mentioning that they like the name transhumanism, transhumanism, I think, or was that they like the Humanity Plus brand? I'm unsure. Uh, uh, but as far so I actually wrote about that particular topic. Um, you know, there are people, and, and I'm one of them actually, I never had a problem with the word transhumanism because for me it had the very specific meaning that it does. But for many people who hear this term for the first time, they, they hear they hear what they want to hear and it has some baggage. So they yeah, hear transhumanism and they, they hear eugenics or they hear um, uh, some sort of... Um, cult of robot worshippers sure. or you know <laughs> and humanity plus i think is a way for us to explore transhumanism while also setting people straight on what transhumanism is not right yeah that i guess that is one of the uh, biggest uh, hurdles that we have is uh, you know people immediately think it's some sort of uh, strange yeah robot worshippers that's a good way to put it <laughs> or uh, you know uh, and I've struggled with that. How do you tell even people, close friends of mine or family members, how you know, how do you bring up that topic uh, about you know, look at what we have and look at where we're going. Uh, we should be talking about this a little bit more uh, because it's going to mean great upheavals for society. The way everything operates is, is going to be. Uh, you know, turned upside down, it seems, in the near future. So I struggle with that as well. Uh, what's, what, how do you uh, bring up such topics with people, say, the first time you meet someone, uh, and they're, they say, hey, what are you interested in? <laughs> and you say, well, hey, uh, you know, I'd like to live a long time, like indefinitely, and uh, <laughs> enhan and pro possibly enhance myself and stuff like that. Uh, how, do you, wh how do you bring up that topic to people? Well, I notice, of course, that lately I'm starting to use the language of Humanity Plus more, so, so I start off talking about my interest in science and technology, but how that can help us um, improve the human condition. I think a lot of people think that what we're really looking for is utopia, and that's not it at all. We're part of an ongoing struggle to improve and to make things better, and, and that's kind of what we're in the midst of. I've also begun to focus more on the next three to five years. I'm not abandoning ideas like the singularity and some of these perhaps longer term I ideas, but, but I do want, I'm, I'm really interested in what people are doing now, not just talking about these things, but what are they actively doing? How are they getting involved? And I think there's, there's what you could call maybe practical transhumanism. I think we're seeing that emerge where well, these people maybe don't refer to themselves as transhumanists, but they are out there in the community and they're out there working on really great uh, projects like okay. fabrication tools in Afghanistan and solar panel technology here in the Southwest in the United States. Nice. Yeah, uh, someone asked this, and I wanted to get to this eventually, was uh, if in any way can you envision um, the Immortality Institute and Humanity Plus working together on any projects in 2009? Do you foresee anything like that? I, I do. I, I think that Immortality Institute is one of the many emerging technology organizations. And each, each one of these organizations has explored in great deal their particular favorite topic. And so I think that they are best equipped, perhaps, to, to, to express those ideas and, and to help us spread those ideas. So I kind of view the Humanity Plus relationship as um, providing a venue for, for these emerging technologies to be expressed to a wider audience. Uh, yeah. So, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I, I was thinking and that, that, that um, the immortality is who could help promote uh, some of the things that Humanity Plus is doing and, and promote those ideas. It seems like uh, we have good grassroots outreach uh, that mm -hmm. can uh, you know re re help try to reach a little bit wider audience. I, I think I view Humanity Plus as kind of a platform where you introduce some of these ideas to people, but then you allow them to tunnel down into more and more detail, and they're able to uh, eventually end up on the Immortality 
of the Institute site or the Foresight Institute site or the Singularity Institute site. Um, it's a way to bring people to the same platform and, and introduce them and then, and then send them on for more details. I see. Yeah, uh, 